Well, hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Real Estate Investing. I'm your host, Sharon Bornholt, and I'm so happy you're tuning in today. My guest is California investor, Gary Boomershine, and we've been trying to figure out how it is we've not connected since, as he pointed out, we're both OGs. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Um, in 2005, Gary founded realestateinvestor.com out of a need to scale and grow his own business, which seems to be a really kind of common theme among the people that are still around after 20 years. They found what they needed in their own business and then they built something around it. He's also host a very popular podcast. He's worked to develop and use an initial product and service and he saw his real estate business flourish by allowing him to work smarter, not harder by focusing on the one thing that makes money and that's talking to sellers and making offers. But there is no one really that knows direct mail like Gary. So I'm really happy to dive into the show. Welcome to the show, Gary. Uh, it's a pleasure, Sharon. I know that I've had you as a guest mm -hmm. and uh, on our show and you know, it is it is funny we people would call us og that's a, a <laughs> original gangster i i think that means anybody that's actually been through multiple market swings i always and... think that it is old old gangster old <laughs> 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 i don't I, I so i like the the original yeah. is much is much better yeah. actually you know who you know who, where i heard the term it was actually i was speaking at Raphael. Uh, Raphael Vargas's event, and uh, he's 20, I think he's like 27, but he called me an OG, and I'm like, what's an OG? <laughs> what's an OG? Yeah, I heard that uh, the Jeff Walker event this past year. They said they all call him an OG, and he said, I am old, but I don't know if I like that term. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so no, it's great to be here. Looking forward to adding a ton of value to your loyal listeners and talk real estate, talk uh, I know that a lot of people come to me because of the direct mail. We've sent out more. We're the number one marketer. I just uh, way, way surpassed anybody even close. We've sent out over 42 million pieces of direct mail. And I've got a phone team that has actually done, I think it's now 2.5 million seller, live seller calls. Wow. Uh, where we're actually screening, following up, and uh, scheduling appointments. Uh, and so... Um, I've got all the data. I know what works best, and I would love to be able to share yeah. any of that stuff because I know you 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 teach direct mail in uh, in what you do, and uh, most of the big players out there that's still their number one source. Mm -hmm. It has always been my number one source of leads. Um, let's let's circle back and talk about how you got started in real estate. Yeah, so let's see. I I'm going to go way back. <laughs> um, I just turned fifty. And so I was a licensed real estate agent when I turned 18. So wow. 1980, 1987, I grew up in a uh, entrepreneurial real estate family. We had a brokerage and uh, called Boomershine Realtors, my last name in the San Francisco uh, Bay Area. And um, all of us kids got into the business. And so I paid for college by holding open houses, door knocking, cold calling and the traditional stuff. Plus we had rental properties. So I was out there you know, uh, painting and turning, you know, uh, <laughs> tearing down walls and all the stuff, all but the I, fun stuff, all the fun stuff. But I, I really didn't love the real estate. I, uh, it was just at the point when technology Silicon Valley was taking off. I got a computer engineering degree and went down the technology path and worked for, I got recruited out of college to the largest technology consulting firm. And then I did four technology startups on the sales side where I moved into enterprise sales, uh, software sales, which what that means is you're selling a product to large Fortune 1000 companies mm -hmm. and charging 500000 to $5 million. Wow. And so uh, long sales cycles, very much a solution selling approach. Um, and I, you know, I, we had 2004 came along and... I was burnt out and my, my, my wife never saw me. We had a two month old baby, uh, Ashley, who literally yesterday turned 16 wow. and a four year old child. And my wife and I said, we need, let's go back to basics. Let's go back to what we know, which is, mm -hmm. <clears throat> cause I was never, I think I had 180,000 miles on United that oh, year. My word. So we've jumped into real estate. Um, I got excited. I, I was originally thinking that we'd, buy apartments. And um, there was a guy that came and spoke here in California. 
was one of those big seminars. There were like a thousand people, huge dog mm. and pony show. But there was a guy that came and talked about buying foreclosures, pre foreclosures. Mm. And this was before anybody knew what a short sale was. Yeah. And so that, where you could go renegotiate with the bank. And I got excited and built a whole business around the foreclosure side. Just like probates, the foreclosure thing was a absolute gold mine yes. from 2004 to about 2007. And because nobody knew what it was. Mm -hmm. And you talk to a realtor back then, they'd say, what, a bank will short, you know, negotiate a discount on the, on the loan? So I found a niche, and what I found is just put me in front of the sellers, and I could close the deal. <laughs> but you have to market. So you have to market, right, direct mail. Uh, and so I built, I, I, I connected with some of my technology uh, friends from my, my past and had them build a little engine for me that would actually do drip direct mail, postcards mm -hmm. and letters. And that was the, uh, and then, I crushed it. We, I think we bought 350 of those properties. I was like the only game in town. And, um, and then all of a sudden, um, people started coming to me saying, Hey, can you do that direct mail for me? And the real estate investor.com was born out of that need. Um, mm -hmm. so now all of a sudden I had two businesses. That's a whole nother story, but I had two businesses, one where I was flipping properties and doing, uh, 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 the foreclosure business and then building real estate investor.com. And then today we've got a uh, real estate investor.com is got about 125 people working for us all over the, the world. Wow. And we do a lot of direct mail for people. This is a kind of a uh, just, we just made the announcement. We actually bought and merged with two technology companies. So we've got the, the follow-up system, the data stacking that does all the skip tracing and then, on top of that, the services, if people want it, that manage all the direct mail and the phone team. Because as you know, marketing by itself does not work. You, it's marketing and then you do need to have a phone team that's calling, you know, following up and screening those leads. And a lot of people, that's where people that do direct mail, if they're not having success, that's usually, they can get the people to call, but actually turning it into an appointment mm -hmm. is it takes takes a lot of time. So we yeah. we provide that service. Well, that's a, the biggest challenge for uh, real estate investors. Other than it's either getting the deal or getting the money, and but you got to get the leads in the door, and that's yeah. what you are so very good at. Uh, to this day, I mean, direct mail was always my number one source of leads, and even when people you remember this one, everybody was working REOs and a whole bunch of people quit doing direct other direct mail. And then when that all dried up, they, I was at my RIA meeting, there were a couple of really young guys there and they said, I guess we're going to have to go back to that old school thing called direct mail. You know, yeah. I'm thinking, well, some of us never quit. So good for us. Yeah. But um, it's been my experience that people have, a, they're not consistent with it. That's one of the main things. Uh, they, they'll be really good for a couple of months, especially if they're trying to do it themselves. And then they kind of drop off the planet because like you said, this is work. The follow-up is work. So uh, what are you seeing in, in general as return rates on direct mail yeah. uh, nationwide? Let, let, me, let me cover that. But I also, I want to, you brought up something that I want to hit first. Mm -hmm. And that is that in 2000, late 2008, everybody was doing direct mail. Yep. So 2007, 2008, just like it is today. So mm -hmm. anybody out there that's doing direct mail today, just realize it got very competitive. Yes. Everybody was chasing off market mm -hmm. and that's direct mail. It's cold calling mm -hmm. and it's text messaging and what's called RVM or, or ringless voicemail. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that capability back then. Yeah. So it was really direct mail and cold calling just like it is. But when the market turned, direct mail stopped. Mm -hmm. It was irrelevant. So everybody moved. Every, uh, there was an 18 month cycle and everything went to the auction to the MLS for bank owned REOs and HUD mm -hmm. properties, right? And so that's the market. And people that are doing direct mail today just realize we're in a very similar market as what we saw in 2007 and 2008. Direct mail today, massive pressure. If we go back to 2013, Sharon, 2000. 12, mm -hmm. nobody was doing direct mail. Yeah. And the response and so, rates were great though. That's right. We were, yeah. we were, we were finding that we had a postcard that was getting like an average of 14% response mm -hmm. rate. 
And that same response rate today is about four, mm -hmm. okay? And so massive pressure. The reason is everybody is going after off market. Mm -hmm. All the seminar guys, like Fortune Builders and some of the uh, Dean Graciosi on TV, they're all teaching direct mail. Mm -hmm. So you've got to, it, does it work? Absolutely it works. Um, you got to do it right. So uh, I can share some of the things that I'm seeing. On average, we've seen about one third decrease this last year from the beginning of 2019 to the beginning of 2020. The response rates have dropped, which means your cost per deal is going to go up. Um, now, if you're a wholesaler, you know, two, a few years ago, your, your ROI. So there's a, some numbers that are really important around direct mail. What's your cost per deal? What's your pro average profit per deal? And what's your return on investment? Mm -hmm. Right? And so you really want to know what those numbers are. Now, I know for probate investing, your ROI is going to be substantially higher. Mm -hmm. Substantially, your cost per deal, because you know, very few people are doing it primarily because it's hard to get the list. Mm -hmm. But once you have the list, uh, it, the cost per deal goes down. Typically, the profit per deal is higher. Yeah. But it's, it's not super scalable, right? So most people that are trying to build a real, you know, a business for, that generates 500000 to a million dollars, they're going to want to supplement probate with inherited properties, mm -hmm. with, you know, recent divorce, recent deceased, et cetera. Um, repetitive mail. It's called the six M's, by the way, to get the marketing part right. There are six M's and I will give everybody, um, we have, I, I wrote up, I took all of our best practices off, off after doing 42 million pieces of mail and we wrote up a guide for free that says, hey, here's, here's everything that we need. You want to know how to make it work. Here's the formula. Okay. And, and I'll give that. It's at realestateinvestor.com. Um, but the, this, to get the marketing working, it is, it is the, it's the right list. That's the market. Mm -hmm. It is the right message. It's the words, the copy. Mm -hmm. It's the, the right medium. Uh, is it going to be a postcard or is it going to be a letter? If you're doing probate mailing, you always want to use a letter. If you're using a small list, a niche list, you're going to want to use a letter. If you are going after the larger equity list, like an inherited property, like an absentee owner, postcards will outproduce dollar to dollar. That's just a proven formula. Um, then there's multiple, there's multiple months and money. Like you don't want to mail too often. A lot of people will mail too often and they do what's called list saturation or uh, list fatigue. So, and all this is in the, the guide that, that people can get from us. Uh, multiple is super important. It has to be repetitive. So people say, how often do you mail? And you know, do you mail five pieces or eight? And for most part, you should never stop, mm -hmm. right? We, we tell everybody five to eight times you should mail to the same name and address, and actually then you should repeat it. Mm -hmm. uh, clean up your list and then do it again. I, <clears throat> Cheryl Twitty is a gal that she's, we've been doing her mailing. She actually called me and canceled uh, our service. And she, she said, hey Gary, I wanna call you. I love the service. I didn't want you to feel like I didn't like the service. She said, but I want to tell you something. You've been, you've been telling me to just keep mailing. And I've mailed this lady for three years. And she called me and she said, you know what, Cheryl? You've worked harder than everybody I've ever seen uh, wanting to buy my properties. And I knew I was going to sell to you. And I think she had like 16 properties. Mm -hmm. So Cheryl said, we bought the properties. We just made $800,000 and we're taking wow. a year off to travel around the world. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, I had a similar story. A, a lady, I mailed her for three years and she finally, but her circumstances changed. Yeah. She wasn't motivated. Then she started to get motivated. And then finally one day it was, Hey, just, just come take the house. Yeah. So repetitive mailing is super important. A uh, couple other things. P people get so hung up on the cost of the list mm -hmm. or the cost of the postcard. And I'll tell you, you're chasing the wrong thing. You're, you're trying to save pennies that are costing you $100 bills. Mm -hmm. It is all about the cost per deal. So if I came, if people, people call me up and say, hey, Gary, how much is the cost per postcard? And I said, if I told you that I sent, if I told you it was like 1800 bucks and uh, let's say a market like, um, well, where you're at, uh, actually it'd be probably half of that. 
But let's say in Florida, if I came in and said, hey, in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, um, I, send out a, I send out a piece of gold and the average cost of uh, uh, an ounce of gold today is a dollar or uh, uh, 1800 bucks. And I said, I send out one piece and that cost per piece is not 32 cents for postcard, it's 1800 bucks. Would you really care at the end of the day if I got you a deal off of it? So it really is the cost per deal. Mm -hmm. you, you have to send out enough pieces to get enough inbound calls. They're going to produce enough good calls with people that are actually motivated, not angry, to turn into offers, to turn into deals. And let me just tell you what we're finding. It's an average of, for most of the mailing, it's an average of 45 inbound calls to produce one deal. So here's what happens. People will do direct mail and they'll get five calls and they'll give up and say it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And the reason is most people are not, when we're marketing to them, they're not motivated yet. So they may actually just be thinking about it. So a lot of people don't realize that, uh, here's the statistic. This is a national statistic. Less than 3% of all of the deals are closed off of that first inbound call. Mm -hmm. right, uh, yeah. Okay. So people will spend all their emphasis on that first call of setting up Pat live or taking the call live. Mm -hmm. Only 3% of the money comes in the money, the 97%, the real gold mine is then working those calls and following up with the seller through follow-up letters, through automated text messages, mm -hmm. through ringless voicemail over the long haul. Uh, not 97% happen. And, and actually, Google, I think Google came up and said, I think it was like 23 follow-ups. The, the national average is five to 12 follow-up interactions with the seller will produce about 80% of those profits. Yeah. So people are, I call it three feet from gold. They'll do direct mail. They're so close. Mm -hmm. And yet they're, they're thinking there's a lot of moving parts to get it right. Sending out direct mail is easy. Making it all work to produce real money is a mm -hmm. science and an art. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. You brought up something that I um, wanted to ask you about. Uh, ringless voicemail, which is uh, highly effective um, in, in certain instances. It's, I know they uh, are beginning to outlaw it in places. What do you know about the, the places? I, I had someone tell me the other day that it's, been, it's illegal in Florida. I've Correct. Yeah, the, the FCC is definitely uh, coming down on, um, on some states. Here's the real concern with ringless voicemail and frankly even text messaging. Text, text messaging is still kind of a gray area. It's really the outbound broadcast where people are, are skip tracing a phone list and then they're doing a broadcast uh, of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of ringless voicemails at the mm -hmm. same time. That's where most people are running into some problems. If you have a lead that comes in, and then you're following up with a combination of ringless voicemail. That's what we do. So realestateinvestor.com, we have a system. It's a follow-up system where the leads come in and then the system will automatically text them. It'll automatically send out ringless voicemail. It'll automatically put them on a follow-up letter campaign. And if they're using our managed uh, part of our service, even our phone team will actually be following up and relent, you know, calling them for mm -hmm. the next year or two years until they're ready to sell screen them, which is a six to eight minute, you know, interview, and then schedule an appointment. So um, the, I always tell everybody, sale, it's marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. So one does not work with the other without the other. So marketing, it, it takes the it takes an inside sales or a phone team that's going to be working those leads. So 45 leads come in, 30 of them are not going to be any good right away. They're going to be angry calls. They're going to be people that are going to say, take me off the mail. So of the 45, 15 are going to be what are called viable or net. That means a seller that says, yeah, you know what? I might be interested in selling. And then of those 15, about half of them are probably vi you know, good for offers. Mm -hmm. That should turn into a deal. That's on average. If you're working a probate list, it's probably going to be a more motivated list. It might be closer to like one in 25 yeah. leads. That's about what we said. One it used to be one in twenty. I think it's probably a little bit uh, numbers are probably a little bit higher. But in general, they are more motivated. Uh, yeah. I can remember though back when they 
you could all day long, you could talk to 20 people and get and end up with a deal. You get talk to 20, go look at maybe get three or four to look at and get a deal every time. And that has dr dramatically changed. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you, especially in the competitive markets, um, there is one fundamental hole missing for most people on making a ton of money off direct mail. And that is what's called the inside sales agent. It's an ISA. That is a dedicated phone person that does nothing but follow up. Mm -hmm. So as the leads come in, I'm not talking about Pat Live or somebody answering that initial call. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the relentless phone follow up. They're missing that team. <clears throat> and that's, that's a team, that's, that's a resource that does nothing but dial numbers, connect with a percentage of sellers and schedules appointments for somebody like you, somebody like me or a sales acquisition mm -hmm. manager to go close. And I always tell in this market, people should not be prospecting. If you're a real estate investor and you're like trying to, you know, our time is, we should be making 500 to a thousand dollars an hour. That prospecting is like two to $5, two to $10, two to $15 an hour work. Mm -hmm. And it is a total numbers game. I always, you know, the analogy is like a diamond mine. Um, you know, if you had a diamond mine, if you had, if you were selling diamonds, and as a real estate investor, we're kind of like a retail diamond store where mm -hmm. we're selling beautiful, shiny, expensive diamonds, right? But the diamonds don't come like that into the diamond store. Somebody actually has to get into the mine with the pickaxe, mm -hmm. right, and slave away right in the in the to get the little rocks and then you know chip them away to actually that's called mining and refining that's really the direct mail plus the inside sales process mm -hmm. and i always tell people in this market you should not do that yourself you should outsource that if it's not to somebody like realestateinvestor.com you want to hire somebody like a virtual assistant for five to ten dollars an hour to do that for you and if they don't do it because it's truly a numbers game you got to send out say three thousand 2000 uh, uh, for most, you know, probate's going to be less than this, but let's say you have to send out 3000 pieces of mail to get a, to get a deal. Right. But those 3000 pieces, it's not just sending them out. It's, it's, you're, you got to get 45 leads. Then somebody actually has to filter and follow up the average time from the time the lead comes in to closing a deal right now is four months. So four months from the time the lead comes in, to the time that you actually get that deal into contract and is four months. So to be clear, they were talking about from the time the lead comes in, that's the time you've sent the mail and that's the time your person has contacted them. That's what the you're first, the first, the first time that a seller has called us off of the mail, typically yes. the average of the time that you go into contracts about four months. Okay. And that's because those, most of those people are not ready. A lot of yeah. people will call. I'll tell you as an example, the not interested leads, the people that call and say, I'm not interested, mm -hmm. those are absolute gold mine leads. They're gold. Okay. But they take four months. You, you don't want to work them, just like probate, right? If you talk to a, a spouse that is, uh, that's in probate, you don't want to start mailing her or him for six months. Well, right. <clears throat> it's the same kind of thing. Uh, not interested, you start text messaging and slowly uh, sending them you know, uh, phone follow-up. And because a lot of sellers, they're not interested today. I'm living in a house right now where the seller called to be removed from the list. Mm -hmm. And we, we still, those are awesome leads. The angrier, the better, by the way, is what we have found. Because <laughs> um, usually if they're angry, it's not because of the direct mail. It's because they've got some other problem. Mm -hmm. So you call them and we put her on a follow-up letter. And three months later, after three follow-up letters, she said, are you still interested in buying? And we bought the property. Okay. So let me, let me circle back here. So you, you're, you're working from a list uh, of people that should potentially be motivated. So you're just not going into a neighborhood and farming a random neighborhood, uh, which it always amazes me. People actually set up to call these people. So you, you got to have some motivation to start with. And even I agree with you with, they say, take me off the list. My goal is always to say, well, I'd like to keep you on the list in case your plan A doesn't work out. Is that okay with you? I'd like to be your plan B. And once you can get them on board, then they've already kind of agreed with you that if they change their mind, 
they're going to come back to you. That's correct. And by the way, most sellers will not necessarily call you back. You have to call them back. Yeah. And that's, the, you know, I can't tell you how many times that uh, people, I'll hear this, I heard this from one of our coaching students, Tyler, that he came in and offered $200,000 and the people were just not ready. Mm -hmm. And somebody else a couple months later won that deal because they, they came in and the, now the seller was finally ready, mm -hmm. right? Sellers are not, there's a lot of, <clears throat> it's a, I call it the motivational price curve. Mm -hmm. And they're not motivated. Everybody's looking for the motivated lead. I think it's fairy dust. So every time somebody says, I'm looking for a motivated seller, it's like, they're not motivated yet. I always tell everybody, mm -hmm. you should always think all leads suck mm -hmm. until you start following up with them. That's mm -hmm. where the money's at. And by the way, it's not just in real estate, it's in every industry. Direct mail only works off of the follow-up. Remember, 3%, it's actually 2.7% national average of the leads that come in off of direct mail close off of the first call. All the money is in the follow-up. And mm -hmm. if you if you talk to any, if you're in masterminds, if you're talking to any of the really big players that are doing, you know, 25, 50, $75,000 a month worth of direct mail, they'll tell you the same thing. It's all off of, it's all off of the follow-up. Yeah. I found something like uh, 80, 81% came after, at or beyond the fifth mailing. Yeah. It, so after the, exactly. Just by staying in the game and, and my, my statistics told me that most people quit on or before the third year. I'm not talking about somebody using your service, right? The average Joe quits on or before the third mailing. So you've got a huge advantage. Just if you just stay in the game, just keep yeah. doing what you're doing and then follow up because uh, another uh, investor, he said that he had kept uh, straight uh, really long-term statistics and he said in his market which was texas he found that 80 percent of his deals came for follow-up yeah and yeah. often after somebody said no they said no the first time but you just can't take that yeah by the way it's a proven fact 80 percent of the deals will come from the, between the fifth and the twelfth follow-up mm -hmm. it's just a proven fact on direct mail dan dan kennedy who's probably behind hundreds of millions of pieces of mail, mm -hmm. maybe even billions of pieces of mail has been saying that for 20 years. Yeah. So it's just, I, I, I'm amazed how, you know, all the information is available for us of how to make it work. It's repetitive. You never, you have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the mailing lists are a big deal because mm -hmm. you could, you could mail, it's called geographic, or yes. targeted mail. So mm -hmm. geographic means you blast the entire geography. The problem right. is it's super expensive. Yeah. I know somebody um, that does 400,000 pieces of direct mail a month. Their, bu their budget is 250,000. They blast uh, with a terrible letter, by the way. I, <laughs> I basically, I was, I, I just, they broke every rule uh, that's ever been taught on how to do direct mail and, and their response rate proved it. They got a, they got a point zero zero. Uh, I think it was a point zero zero seven response rate. It might have been even half of that. Who even yeah. thinks that's a good idea? <laughs> well, they're making money. They did ten million dollars in revenue, gross revenue, wow. but their cost per deal was astronomically high. Nine thousand dollars a deal. I came to them and said, "Your cost per deal <laughs> should probably be about twenty five hundred bucks in mm -hmm. your market." And uh, and then they got stuck on the, they were sending out a letter and they said, well, we can send out a letter for 36 cents. And it's like, yeah, but you don't, you don't want to send out a letter. They put a website on the letter. You should never put a website address on your letter, maybe in a follow-up, but even, even there, you want a phone number that is tracked, that goes into an auto dialer and into an automated text messaging system to, to do the follow-up. So you don't want pretty, pretty doesn't work. You don't need pictures. Uh, Google Street View can actually work. Um, I think that the jury is still a little out on that. It depends on the market. But, you know, uh, the list is super important. So we like, we really like, besides probate, we really like the inherited mm -hmm. absentee free and clear list. That's a mm -hmm. proprietary one that we pull for people, but it's inher inherited properties. These are people that most likely have inherited a property through affidavit, a death, or uh, been put into a trust. Mm -hmm. That list is 18 million properties wow. in the U.S. So it's a large list. 
that uh, uh, we're finding a lot of burned out landlords mm -hmm. and a lot of people that uh, live out of state. That's a that's that's been the bread and butter. I love code violations, abatements, recently divorced, recently deceased. Um, you know, the foreclosure and the bankruptcy lists are really good, but you that we have to cross reference all that with equity because about sixty to seventy percent of those lists have no equity. Mm -hmm. And if if we, if we need to buy with equity so that we can uh, wholesale the property, then then uh, that needs to be cross referenced. We do all that for people, um, and uh, if they want it, and then our guide will tell you what to do if you want to do it on your own. So, are you in your real estate business? You're primarily wholesaling. Well, I'm I'm in four markets. I am uh, I wholesale. I pick up properties creatively. Mm -hmm. So I've got a very unique approach. So I do a multiple offer approach to a seller. Right. And I would say one in 10, one in 12, we're actually getting a really good favorable terms with a seller. Mm -hmm. And then I do a ton of private lending. So I'm a big, uh, I love, I, I prefer actually lending. And I actually, I won't even get into the details. I take some of my creative deals and I turn mm -hmm. those into lending. Mm -hmm. so I do a lot of first position notes. Um, and uh, I, I invest in my 401k off of that. So I'm not a high volume person, mm -hmm. but um, our, 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 uh, our, uh, the wholesaling I like because right now in this market, especially I'm in, I'm in California, so I'm not interested in taking on uh, debt right now. Right, right. <laughs> so, I was gonna say, so yeah, that's so, a scary, scary market. Yeah. So what are some, what about some of the other super co co competitive markets, uh, Phoenix, uh, some of the other ones, uh, what, what are the uh, response rates in those areas are, I guess people are still doing direct mail, certainly. Yeah. Here's what I'm finding. If you're a wholesaler, you're probably looking at a four X, 400% ROI off of direct mail, cold calling, or any of the methods for off market a 4x means spend a dollar make four dollars mm -hmm. in profit a couple years ago it was somewhere spend a dollar make six to ten dollars all right so it's really if you're in if you're in phoenix that's a super important number because in louisville kentucky um what is your average profit per deal on a wholesale would you say out there is it 10 grand ten, yeah 10 grand i would say yeah so i would imagine you're probably in your market on average, probate's going to be less, but on average, you're probably looking at, I would imagine, 1500 bucks, $1,700 in marketing to produce a $10,000 wholesale flip. Mm -hmm. If you're in Florida, you're looking at about $3,000. Uh, that will typically get you a fifteen to $17,000 uh, wholesale fee. If you're in Indianapolis, I know we've got a couple of guys there, but... Um, Clay Manship, they did 2.3 million mm -hmm. last year, and we were their primary source for direct mail. Uh, I think they said that they did 1.3 million in wholesale flips, and their cost per deal was like about 1,100 bucks. Oh wow! Per deal, and that's and in that, Indianapolis. Indianapolis, wow. and that's that's from I think the year before they were at like 600 dollars per deal. I know deal. Indy's gotten more expensive. I know that. Yeah. 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 I think his average profit per deal is 12, 12,000. So, you know, at the end of the day, they made pretty good, a uh, pretty good chunk of change. He actually bought an office building, he paid off his house and, and uh, you know, direct mail. Here's the thing about direct mail. It absolutely works. It's scalable, it's repeatable and it's measurable. So that's why the big players do it because it, it's a, it's a, it's an ageless uh, fact. It's a, it's all an ROI. So you spend a dollar and you know that you're going to make $4 if you mm -hmm. just follow the process. Um, and there are other people that are making a lot more of that. You know, it depends also on your sales skills. So how good are you right. at interacting with the seller? Yeah. And if you're really good at interacting with the seller, you know, you're going to make a lot more money. Yeah, that's where, you, that's where you can really reduce the number of, uh, mm -hmm. if you can close more deals, it, the, sp the spread of, it, that, that whole thing doesn't matter quite as much. And when, when you're brand new, there's a, learning, there's a learning curve and you just yeah. have to understand it's part of it. Is I tell my students, when you're brand new, this is not true in California if it takes you two hours to get everywhere, but here, you, you should go look at everything. Make your mistakes on deals where you don't really care. Practice talking to sellers, practice submitting offers. And then when one comes your way, 
um, then, then, then you're prepared to do it correctly. Then it doesn't become, you, you can create systems and things, but there is just no substitute for getting out there and learning how to do this. Yeah. Here's the most important out of any of this stuff in this business. And uh, a good buddy of mine, Brent Daniels actually has this term. Mm -hmm. It's TTP. Mm -hmm. In this business, you have to talk to people. Talk to There's people. no mm -hmm. substitutes. So a lot of people at the end of the day, they, they have some fear of rejection. Yeah. But in order to make any money in this business, you do have to have a live phone interaction. Mm -hmm. And it's a relationship business. And this is where most of the newbies, most mm -hmm. of the people that are lacking in experience, they always will say, oh, direct mail doesn't work. They, mm -hmm. This particular thing, my market's unique. Oh, it's too competitive. That's nonsense. Yeah. It's, you have to talk to people. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be doing your own prospecting. You should only go on appointments that somebody else has teed up for you. Mm -hmm. That means doing the direct mail, massive amounts of follow-up via text message, and you know, dialing for dollars. Somebody needs to do that. And you should be on appointments on a daily basis if you're going to make this business work. I mean, that's the reality. Now, if you're brand new, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of this possibly on your own for the first deal. But if you want to have any real business and scale this, you've got to have a resource below you, mm -hmm. right? There's no business in America. I always tell everybody, we're not real estate investors. Warren Buffett says a real estate investor mm -hmm. is somebody that has money. They buy a property and they hold it forever. Yeah. And take all the benefits. We're business operators, mm -hmm. right? We are business operators. A wholesaler is somebody that's basically a single transaction and it's a job. Great mm -hmm. job, right? If it's done right. But I say that because a, a business operation needs a CEO. That's all of us on this call. That's mm -hmm. you and me. And mm -hmm. if you're doing $10 an hour work as a CEO, you're going to have a $10 bank account. Mm -hmm. So that's just the fact. So a lot of people get really stuck on, the direct mail. The direct mail is actually meaningless if you don't have somebody talking to people. Yeah. And uh, I've had students that would send out direct mail and would never answer the phone. Yeah. I oh, mean, I can't. Really? <laughs> I, I've generated, <laughs> we had somebody, I generated them a thousand leads mm -hmm. and they came in and said, Hey, I can't make this thing work. And we went in and we showed them, look at the number of appointments. Talk to me about this seller that, that, oh, I didn't call him back. What about this guy? Turned out they called nobody. Why? Yeah, yeah. Because they were scared. Terrified. Yeah. Right? What is sa sales, which is, that's what we do. This is marketing mm -hmm. and a sales business. Sales doesn't start until you get a no, mm -hmm. a rejection. That's the definition of sales. And the number one fear behind public speaking and death is the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. So people, it's got, it's just, it's, a, it's, there's a, hu a human interaction. Uh, that's why I like to have a phone team. Like you can hire, if you, you can hire, like uh, we do it for people, but you can hire somebody to do this for you. And uh, you can even use the script. We've actually have the perfect script that's, that you can get off our website for free and of exactly what to say. I want to share one other little nugget. Um, <clears throat> I, people have asked Gary, what about using the Philippines for uh, a phone person? And mm -hmm. I want to tell, I, I never thought, Sharon, I could do that, especially in a market like California, mm -hmm. okay? And I've proven it wrong. You have. I've, I've proven it wrong. Mm -hmm. And the reason is in the Philippines, you can hire somebody for like five to $10 mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. And that same person here is like four or five times the amount. Yeah. All right. So we've got, we've done two and a half million outbound calls and I've got all the metrics. I can outperform anybody on doing this, including people here in the States. Nobody's proven me wrong. So every single day, our team comes together and we share some of the latest objections. And so a very common objection and everybody, if you're even thinking about using a, a phone person, just pay attention to this because this is, this is absolutely gold. So a question from a seller is where you're, where are you calling from? Right. Right. And, and everybody's fearful because the Philippines. So here's what we have trained our team. They're scripted. I'm calling from the Philippines. I'm about an hour from Manila and Sharon hired me or your name or your mm -hmm. business hired me in the Philippines so she can pay higher prices for houses. And how am I doing? Is there any feedback that I can provide Sharon on, on, the, on, on this call? 
we have a hundred percent stick rate with the sellers, which means wow. they're staying on the phone. It be, it's, we've taken something that could be a little bit of a negative and turn it into a positive. And by the way, we've got about 50 of those little zingers on these seller objections because it's all about forwarding the sale. And so here's what we have found. It takes an average, like you should have somebody, somebody manually dialing all day long, follow up. These are, this is not cold calling. This is purely follow up. One person manually dialing can dial 125 phone numbers. They'll connect with 12 sellers. That's one in 10. All right. The rest of them go to voicemail, busy, you know, mm -hmm. hang up. Hang up. Mm -hmm. And that'll produce one and a half appointment. It's 125 to one and a half appointment. All right. And then typically you need about, you know, five to seven appointments to close a deal. It's a pure numbers game. Yeah. So if somebody's not, somebody has to do the 125 dialing. And the problem is, is that there's not probably one person on this show on your podcast today, or frankly, even in the country that can do the 125. So in order to make marketing work, somebody actually has to do the phone follow-up and the texting and the follow-up letters. <laughs> you yeah. get that right, right? So I like the Philippines. Um, we know, like we, we're on an auto dialer, so those leads go into an auto dialer. We can dial up to 650 of those a day, so we can turn more appointments. Well, that's, that's actually a brilliant way to put it because I've, I've, I know a number of people that have tried working with people in the Philippines and they've largely not been successful. Yeah. Uh, that, that's one good way to put it. The other problem they've had time and time again is overcoming the time differences. Uh, so they have to work around that. You have to pretty much find somebody that wants to work in uh, their night, which is generally your day. So right. that's another thing. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you this. I, can I add to that? Yeah. Here's the, th here's the situation. You've got a man, you got a high, you got to find, you got to hire. More importantly, you got to train and then you have to manage mm -hmm. people, period. Somebody has to do that work. And the problem is, is that, they, 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 they have to be trained on the right script. So a lot of people will say, oh, the Philippines wasn't any good. Yeah, but you, you didn't train them on the right script. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you're not managing them and keeping them busy, they're going to be moonlighting and, and, and charging 10 other clients yes. and, telling, and working for you full time, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's one of the reasons like we've, we've, we've got a full, we've got a full time set of managers that do nothing but manage. Uh, we have a QA person. We actually have a, yeah, uh, we're, we have competitions during the week where we're giving out bonuses for best per performance. Um, huddle calls every single day, training. They're scripted. So they're practicing in front of all of each other. I think, what is our phone team? Like 45 people. Um, so that they're constantly competing and we're, you know, we're letting go the, the, the low performers. So that's, you still have to manage. And right. if everybody forgets about that time, it's like, oh, I can hire somebody for five bucks an hour. It's like, yeah, but you might have to manage them 12 hours a week. And what's your time worth? Nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this. If someone is just getting started, um, that's a pretty, pretty big um, system you've got there. So let's say somebody's getting started and they want to scale up. Maybe they're doing some deals. I'm not talking about your brand new person, but somebody that's mm -hmm. doing some deals and they, they can see where they want to do however many a year. Mm -hmm. And they cannot themselves get there. So where do they start? What, what's the path for them to, to scale up over a period of a year or two years or however many years that is? Yeah. Well, one, there is one system for people, if they're going to do direct mail, there is one system that they need. And typically, and there's a lot of different systems that do this. We have one that's called touch. So mm -hmm. real estate investor touch is a $97 a month system. Mm -hmm. So you need a system that does the, that the leads come in. You can, you need a phone number mm -hmm. that you can actually put on your marketing piece and you need to have a system that will text and ringless voicemail and manage like who needs to be called. So the follow up, piece needs to be automated. That is not something that you want to do in this market without a fairly inexpensive system. There's lots of them out there okay. to do this. Uh, so we have one called, uh, we have one that's called touch. The follow-up is key, right? I already said that the, the follow-up is key. If you're doing direct mail um, and you've never done this before, you want to do it on your own. I really like um, the vacant list or the absentee 
high equity list. It's not going to get you the best results, but that is a, a list that I like. Kent Clothier has his um, Find Motivated Sellers Now or Smart. I do like that list. Um, so for somebody that wanted to go buy it themselves, you could, you could go to list source. I'm not a huge fan of list source. You're going to spend like five to seven cents a record, but the data is massively saturated because you have everybody from the seminars mm -hmm. that are being taught. Oh, just go out here. Go to list source. Yeah. Okay. Um, the direct mail, the place that I like the best place for sending out direct mail. I really like graphics connection out of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have the pre they have pieces that are already proven. So it's not you don't you don't want to have to design nobody on this If you've never done direct mail and you're not an absolute expert. Don't try to invent your own piece There's it's it's already been proven um, So that in <clears throat> on my on realestateinvestor.com. I think I have the the places to go um, And the recommendations there are a lot of mail houses out there um, I like graphics connection. We put a I, I don't, I don't know. We send out, I think we're sending out a couple of million pieces of mail a month right now. And they're one of our sources for, for doing the direct mail. Well, let's say somebody wants to get started with your company. Let's talk about the services you offer. Um, what is the starting point? Um, if somebody came to you and you said, okay, this is how much it's going to cost you on the, on the starter plan. What yeah. does that, what does that look like? I'm sure you have got levels. Yeah. Yeah. We have with primarily three, three levels. Plus we have another property list manager is the data stacking skip tracing mm -hmm. tool. And that's uh, propertylistmanager.com. Uh, we have three, primarily three levels. We have touch. So realestateinvestor.com it's called touch grow and managed. It's really touch and grow or really do it yourself. So we're going to provide you the follow-up system. Um, you don't need to have any phone number system. You don't need call rail. It's all integrated into one package. It's, it's, it does, uh, I mean, it's a beautiful site. A lot of people are on Podio. We actually moved away from Podio. Uh, I think that that will probably be a dead, a dead, uh, direction for most people in a year. Cause a lot of people have been doing Podio. We were too. So touch and grow. That's like really a hundred dollars to a couple hundred dollars a month. And that's, that's, that's for you to pull your own list, possibly from our property list manager. You can get it from there too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then the, you the, send your own mail, you send your own mail. Or? Yeah. You're going to do your own mail on your, on your own independently. Okay. okay. Um, and you're going to do your own phone follow-up work, but in terms of outbound follow-up text and all the tasks of who should be called up and when, and all the automation, that whole mining piece that I talked about, like a diamond mine, that's all done uh, in, in the system. Now, if you wanted to use our resources mm -hmm. and have it done for you, and the pulling of the mailing lists and the direct mail and the follow-up phone team, possibly even cold calling or outbound broadcast text messaging, that will typically be in addition to that. Okay. And so, uh, you know, it's primarily for to use our services to do it for you, you're going to probably, you know, you really want to be committed for about three to six months minimum uh, to do marketing. It's really, if you're not going to commit to something for three to six months, it would, mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't even want you to do it yeah. with us. And, you know, you're going to have to commit to a marketing budget. Um, and typically it's a $1,500 to $2,500 a month budget, uh, which would be enough postcards to go out to get you you know, deals. Okay. So it's, it's probably that managed service is usually more, they're not brand new. Uh, we got a lot of people that are brand new using our software, mm -hmm. but usually it's somebody that's really ready to scale up. Maybe they've, maybe they've done five deals, four deals, and they're ready to go to the next level. And that's where we're really good. Like we're really good at getting people to what I call jump the line. Okay. So, you know, go from the ne up to the next level. And we've got a lot of people that are, you know, that they're, they're you know, they're doing hundreds of deals, hundreds, hundreds of deals a year so with us. So they could see a path from, uh, they could, uh, I discourage people from doing it in-house, from doing the printing. So they could, yeah. they could get started, get the list, they could outsource it. And then uh, what I'd like for people to look at is don't, when you do a couple of deals, don't spend the money. That's market, it's called marketing money. That's not called, I'm going to buy a new car money. Right. So save that uh, 10, 20, you really need more like $20,000, I would say, 
at least 20, 25,000, then to invest in uh, some months of your service to get another deal. In the beginning, I like to think of it as stacking. You got to stack your money over here because that's where you're going to begin to explode your growth when you have marketing money. If yeah. you if you get a deal and then you go go to Mexico, well, you're never you're always going to just be searching for one deal. Yeah, you know, marketing and sales is a return on investment. If you look mm -hmm. at every co every company in America, a real company, marketing is a return on invest investment. Mm -hmm. They know that if I spend a dollar in marketing, I'm going to get four dollars in return. If I spend a dollar on sales, I'm going to get a ten dollar return. Mm -hmm. Most people they they look at it wrong. It's like if yeah. you don't have mar if you don't have marketing and you don't have sales, you don't have a business. You don't have anything, yeah. Because <laughs> you got to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you, and you have to answer your phone. Once you send the mailing out, you have to actually answer yeah. the phone. You have to call people back. Well, this has just been a wealth of information. I think people's heads are probably spinning right about now because it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot to take in. And I would say go back and listen to this show a couple of times and know that you can start where you are. That's the thing, don't get scared off by this, but I hope that you got a vision for what is possible and you can see a path for scaling up. Maybe it's a, a, a year, two years, three years. I don't think you can really build a, a big sustainable build business unless you have a vision. You gotta have, you gotta be able to see the future, future cast your, uh, your vision, otherwise, all the hard part, I think it's the hardest in the beginning where you're, you're you, like you said, you've either got to spend your time or your money on marketing. Most people, yeah. it's a combination of both. When you are having to spend your time and maybe you've got, uh, you've still got a full-time job and that's what's paying your bills. Guess what? Everybody does it. You know, all these people that are overnight successes, uh, most of them have spent 10 years in a job. And then suddenly it all clicks and they can quit their job comfortably. Some people do it sooner. But it's not at all unusual and for me to know people that they'll say, yeah, I was an overnight 10-year success. You know, one guy said, I drove a box truck for 10 years, hated yeah. every minute of, minute of it. Yeah. But it allowed me to build a really strong foundation, and now I'm free. You know, I've, yeah. got some, I've got some rental houses, I've got my marketing in place, and now I'm free. One of the things that, that just drives me nuts, I see this over and over again for new investors, is they will spend they'll spend $10,000 on a coaching program. Mm -hmm. They'll, uh, they'll do asset protection when they don't have any money yeah, and yeah. they'll spend money. They'll, 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 they'll spend all the money, 50, a hundred thousand dollars on all this education. Mm -hmm. And then they won't spend a dime on marketing. Yeah. And then they wonder why that they're quitting the business. The money should all be put in. You, you've got to put it into marketing and then you've mm -hmm. got to talk to people. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's and the secret. <laughs> that's it is really the secret. Mm -hmm. And by the way, once you have your first couple of deals, you know, you're launched mm -hmm. and then you're going to scale up exactly what you said. Then you reinvest some money. This is what businesses in America do. They reinvest some money because if you, if, if I think of it like a bank, imagine a, a bank had a sale and they were saying, Hey, come in with a dollar bill and you give us the dollar bill. And in five months or four months, we're going to give you a $5 bill a crisp $5 bill. Wouldn't most of us say, really? Mm -hmm. Guaranteed, right? A dollar for $5 in four months. Wouldn't we be coming in with wheelbarrows? Yeah, we right? would. Mar marketing is this, it's the same thing. You mm -hmm. do have to put enough into the engine to have enough stuff come out that you're going to close deals. And that's, you know, it's, th th there's no other business that I know of that has the kind of returns it, that mm -hmm. we get in real estate mm -hmm. without a lot of operating money on the front end, but you do have to make some investment. You do. Well, Gary, this has been a, a great show. I've got three quick questions for you. The people are always interested to know uh, how successful people got where they, where they are. Did you have a mentor uh, that directly impacted you early on? Was there somebody that stands out? Yeah, hundred percent. My whole life, I, I just shared this when I was down, uh, and and I've got I've got four today. I've got I have four CEO coaches. Uh, one that's a personal trainer. I wanted to lose some weight and get back into shape. Uh, yes, I having a mentor and having a coach um, has has is really I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. I recommend it to everybody. Uh, my coach today is a guy. Uh, his name's Willie Hooks. Uh, we call him Yoda. Doesn't say a lot, but changed my life, uh, got me out of being a workaholic and uh, 
That's a huge one. The second thing I would say is masterminds, mm -hmm. being around smarter people. I, I'm yes. in 10. And then the third is uh, I follow traction. So the traction business model, mm -hmm. uh, because it's about accountability. This business is not easy. It's it takes, not easy. It takes work. So mm -hmm. anybody that's looking for get rich quick to go to bed broke and wake up rich tomorrow, <laughs> guess what? This is not the business and I don't know any of them. Can you have an incredible financial wealth building machine and a lifestyle? You can. If you're persistent, you're following the best practices. Mm -hmm. And yes, having a mentor or coach to guide you is, uh, is, abs is I wouldn't have done it without it. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me, I, I, I may know the answer to this, your favorite book you've read in the last 12 months. Yeah, so Traction, hands down, mm -hmm. uh, that's by Gina Wickman. That, I, a lot of people in the real estate uh, industry are following that. It's really a management model. It's called the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Mm -hmm. I'm reading one right now. I actually just bought it for my entire team. This is called The Messy Middle. Oh, I like that. So. Uh, by Scott Belsky, and it's really for businesses uh, that are growing and scaling. So we're like a $10 million a year business, and you know we've got a lot of people. We're fully distributed, so that's a great book. I love um, Never Split the Difference mm -hmm. by Chris Voss. It's mm -hmm. a great sales book is, is another one. Um, yeah, what else? what else would I say? Uh, influence. By mm -hmm. we've, you know, Most of us that have been around, we're, we read the same we books. Re we read the books, yeah. And I'm always interested to hear. I did a, a show earlier, and I learned, uh, learned about a new book there. Um, also, uh, last thing, what piece, what's one piece of advice you would give to people listening to this show that they're feeling really frustrated right now? They're just feeling stuck. What, what would you say to those people? Well... You, you want to start with your vision of where you're going to head. Mm -hmm. And um, the vision is what do you want your life to look like in a year from now? And then what do you want your life to look like in 10 years from now? It sounds like it's the no brainer thing yet. Mm -hmm. So few people do it. The people that are successful, they always have a plan because if you don't have some plan, by the way, this could be on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a book. But without a plan, you go nowhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, if you're, there's the famous quote, there's a famous quote by Einstein where he said, uh, the definition of insanity is where you repeat the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Different result. Yeah. It doesn't happen. You have to change. We call it, I call it habit stacking. You have mm -hmm. to change the way that you've done something for a different outcome. And then, you know, especially for new people, it's the Henry Ford quote where he says, if you believe you can, or if you believe you can't, you're right. right. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people, the difference between people that succeed and have what they want and the people that fail is the mindset. 100% of the time, the mindset is, mm -hmm. you know, oh, this is a competitive market. Oh, this is too hard. Oh, my market is special. Oh, whatever mm -hmm. it is. It's like, you know what? That's, that's all mindset. Because mm -hmm. you'll take one person that's crushing it in your market and others that fail, and it's the mindset. So it's ha you want to have a plan. It's, it's the mindset of, like, persistence and tenacity. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it's like if you see a wall, like, for me, if, if I see a wall – I'm not going to stop at the wall. I'm going to go through it. I'm going through it or I'm going around it. Mm -hmm. And then the third is, you know, having a coach, I think is a good ROI. It's a mm -hmm. good return. It's a CEO coach. It's an accountability coach. Now I'm not talking about somebody that's just teaching you real estate. Somebody that's somebody that's going to give you the, the hard love. Yeah. It's tough you know, love. Right. It's a tough love. It's like, Hey, mm -hmm. in order for you to, how many, how many sellers are you going to talk to? next week mm -hmm. and then you get on the phone with them and say hey how many sellers did you talk to this week oh you didn't you didn't talk to anybody why not oh mm -hmm. you didn't I was busy right that's the accountability because you mm -hmm. got to talk to people you got a time block it's the it's the very basic stuff so having a coach is really important awesome well guys that's it for today be sure to reach out to Gary realestateinvestor.com that's correct I that's think correct. And he be sure to get his freebie over there too who doesn't like uh, more more learning here? Get that and 
uh, you do have to implement it. No magic button here. And uh, if you would um, be so kind as a, if you love this show, go over and get leave us a review and, and give us a rating. We would so appreciate that. Gary, thanks again. Pleasure. It was great fun. And uh, yeah. to the listeners, thanks for spending time with us today. And I'll see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>